Soil sampling is a valuable way for farmers and gardeners to learn about the levels of different nutrients in their soil so that they can determine what fertilizers they need to add and how much to add so that they'll get good plant growth without adding too much which could harm their pocketbooks or harm the environment. But a soil test is only as good as the sample that we collect. And I'm going to demonstrate now how to collect a good sample for a soil test. Okay, the field that I'm in is about a quarter of an acre in size. And we would want to collect at least a dozen samples, and probably 15 would be better, that we would then mix together to form the one sample that we would send to the lab. The simplest way to collect a sample is with an inexpensive soil probe like this. This probe collects a uniform core. Generally, for garden samples or for farm samples, we want to collect to a depth of 8 to 12 inches. And this works pretty simply. I'm going to push the core into the ground and pull it out. And here we see the intact sample. I'm now going to put this sample into a clean bucket and a screwdriver is a very handy tool to do that. And then we will move across the field and take additional samples. And I generally go in a zigzag pattern across the field. So once again, I will insert the probe. Use my screwdriver to remove the soil from the probe and then we would repeat that another 10 to 12 times to have our complete sample. Okay, Once we've collected the sample we want to mix it very well and a lot of times I'll just mix it with my hand. I break up the clods of soil and I make sure that that dozen or so samples that we collected are all mixed together very well. You could mix with a trowel as well if you wanted to and then we're going to take this sample and lay it out in a warm place to air dry for several days and then it will be ready to be sent to the lab. You could put it on your coffee table, you could put it in, in your garage, lay it on some butcher paper, um, spread it out into a thin layer and let it air dry. Once the sample is air dry, you would then subsample it again, like with a tablespoon, and collect a little bit from different parts of that sample and put it into a plastic sandwich bag. And what you want is about eight ounces or about a cup of soil to send to the lab. So what if you don't have one of those probes? You can also sample with a trowel. It's a little bit more work, but it can be done fairly easily. In this case, I'm going to dig a little hole with the trowel or separate the soil. I'm going to take a core out and this core is about four inches deep. Okay, we're then going to trim it off so I have something that's about the shape of that um, core that I took with the, with the corer earlier. Something about like this. And I'll put this in the bucket. Now I've only gone down four inches, so I'm going to have to dig my hole a little deeper so that I can get down an additional depth. Here's about another three, four inches, which is going to be enough for our soil sample. I'll trim it in the same way or in a similar way, and we'll put this in the bucket. And then we'd need to repeat that. 10 or 12 times to have enough for the sample to send to the lab. Now some soil is a whole lot easier to sample than other soils. If a soil is really dry, it's tough, so it's best to sample a soil during the moister times of the, of the year, either during the fall when you have finished gardening for the year, or in the spring before you've started and before you've applied any fertilizer. Another problem with soil sampling is rocks, and if you have a rocky soil, a probe like this isn't going to work. Even a trowel may not work, and you may need to be sampling with a spade or a shovel. But you can follow that same technique that I showed with the trowel, except on a little bit larger scale, to collect samples with a shovel. 